So our, our colleague, Amber Huffman, who's really one of the kind of most visible leaders out there, within, especially with NVMe, NVM Express, um, she was supposed to give this talk and uh, came down ill, so she wasn't able to join us. So I'm going to try to do the best I can. Um, but please, please um, you know, my apologies. I definitely won't do the same talk that Amber could do. This, this presentation, this portion of the talk is really intended to, to, to really drive home the transition that's underway. And, and again, I'll, I'll highlight the impact that, that initially SAS and SATA based flash and then PCI based flash has had. But as we transition forward, I think you'll understand the need to move away from traditional notions of how we talk back and forth to disks. That notion of SCSI um, and you know, propagating SCSI forward when disks are no longer or devices are no longer the slowest component becomes a real question mark. <clears throat> so the first part of this talk will focus in on the, the new media 3D crosspoint. Oh. So what is 3D Crosspoint? It is a totally new media. It is not NAND. Um, I, I'm not going to be able to do the justice that uh, Amber can do to it, but this media is new, silicon-based, persistent um, <coughs> media that actually has more characteristics like memory than it does um, traditional storage and so this represents a huge step forward for the industry. This is really a technology that we believe will be transformative um, in the data center as well as outside of the data center. Has everyone seen kind of the, the 3D crosspoint announcements and? How many layers are you guys currently planning on shipping? How many layers? Yeah, so it shows, I guess, three layers here. Is that is that your current shipping product? Um, I mean, we're not shipping a product yet, so but I believe the the this but picture represents kind of that's one layer. Yeah, that's one. No, one, three one, bit, one bit cell layer. Yeah, there's there's, there's two bit those. cell layers there. No, the the bit cell is the the center part. No, the bit cell is a yellow part. That's just an example. Layer. Let's let him get on with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. All right, get on, get with, on it. with it. <laughs> So first and foremost, if you think about it, what I mean by memory versus rotational is this is not block addressable. This is byte addressable. Metal, yeah, this is line. word or cache line level access to persistent media. And so that, in, that alone has massive repercussions about all the assumptions that went into our storage platforms. Um, this is a really, really big change. <clears throat> this is also very large capacities at a, uh, that represent a big boost over traditional DRAM footprints in a server um, used in storage. So this represents the opportunity to have much more fast, fast byte addressable persistence within a single server. Um, and again, that's a big change. The media itself is a massive breakthrough um, in the materials. Now, I can't go into any detail in the materials. I'm a software guy, but um, and filling in for the hardware folks. So you but have nobody's to. Nobody's answered any of the questions about the material anyway, so that's okay. <laughs> that's true. I Even do feel comfortable about that. So, but it, but the one thing that I can say. Intel's announcement represents a, a level of confidence in producing this at volume, and, and that is what we do. And so that represents a pretty big change. Um, and so when you produce it at volume, how many layers will it be? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a software guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't channel her all the way. All right, and so, and then the availability of this is not, it's not science fiction. We're not talking 
tens of years on the, out on the horizon. This is something that we feel very comfortable talking about today. Um, and that's the announcements. And, and uh, the price? It's, it's not been announced. I can't talk about pricing or, or exact dates. Um, what I can talk about is high level. What you will see is this thousand times faster than NAND, um, which represents a huge, I mean, NAND represented a huge performance boost over rotational media. This is a huge performance boost over NAND. Thousand times the endurance of NAND, um, and it's symmetrical, um, which means that the difference in um, read operation performance versus write operation performance actually starts to move to parity, which is a big difference from NAND. <laughs> and then finally, it's 10 times denser than DRAM, which means you have a much larger footprint. So we're, we're talking tens of terabytes rather than you know, up to a terabyte. And, and we believe that this, this change is transformative and will enable things that haven't been possible previously with our technologies. So massive in-memory databases, fast system recovery, low latency, high endurance. These are things that all force you to rethink how you build storage platforms, how you access data anywhere in your data center. And it represents a huge, huge opportunity for innovation. And so personally, I've been working in the technology industry for a long time. This is the most exciting kind of introduction of technology since really the internet itself and, and the emergence of the internet for everybody. So there's a question from the, uh, from the, the Twitter. Twitter uh, it's how, when is this going to start shipping in uh, technology? The 3D cross point? Yes. So I, again, I can't talk to exact, exact dates. The announcements were because it's, it's imminent shipping. Like um, weeks <coughs> We're not asking for exact dates. The announcements were that they were going to sample next year. Okay. It will be available in both NVMe form factor, so PCI based, as well as in DIM form factor. And so this is a really interesting aspect of building storage platforms. Um, So the next thing I want to do, though, is focus in on NVMe technology because really, when you think about being able to access persistent media at approximating DRAM speeds, we're, we're, we're definitely talking about getting rid of SCSI. Right? The, the notions and the needs for SCSI, and even at byte addressable, the need for block Right? What does a file system do when data is byte addressable? I've, in, in my memory, file systems fundamentally were about hiding the access to block. Do you even need file systems in this world? Well, it turns out you probably do, but for different reasons than providing metadata for where your data is in the blocks. <coughs> All right. so. NVMe, NVM Express, we all call it NVMe, so I can't get that out of my mind. Um, and Amber is leading this, this standardization process. We're, we're very much committed to making this a widely accepted standard, and we're working with a, a large number of collaborators in making this happen. <coughs> what is NVMe? Um, it's a standard in interface for PCI Express-based solid state. Um, this is intended for use both with NAND for NAND and for 3D Crosspoint or any other next generation uh, non-volatile media. 
it, it really does start with the questioning of the need to propagate SCSI forward. <laughs> and so how, if we were to, to step back and ask ourselves, how could we or what would we do if we didn't have all the signaling requirements and everything that went into the SCSI design all those years ago? And the answer is you'd make a much simpler protocol, it, one that actually was up to the, the task of delivering on the response time of the media. And so that's really what drove the design of this. <clears throat> because it's a standard, the operating system vendors have gotten behind it. And so what you'll find is, as uh, already is that the drivers the, on, for both initiator target for the de physical devices, these are all available. So it's, it's easily adopted today. The, the protocol itself is very, very simple. And so it's, it's very efficient, it's very scalable, um, it, it's very easy to program to. And so a lot of storage level developers have taken on the task of enabling this. And we have a huge amount of team, Nate's gonna talk about some of the things we're doing in this space um, to enable that even further. And it's optimized for this next generation media, the 3D crosspoint technology, right? This, this wasn't <coughs> done out, out because we, we wanted to do something um, without knowledge of this, this technology. We knew very much that with the introduction of 3D crosspoint technology and the DRAM-like performance that it provides, SCSI is not going to be able to give you the, the access to it. And so we needed a protocol that could fully allow you to fully realize the performance potential of the media. So what are we really talking about in terms of performance? Um, in terms of throughput, this graph gives you a pretty good idea. Um, you know, there at SATA, your throughput is um, down on, you know, well under a gigabyte per second. With a, a by four PCI um, express based current generation NAND, we're just over um, three gigabytes. <laughs> With by eight PCI um, E Gen 3, this next generation with 3D crosspoint, we're, we're looking at beyond six. So that's that 10x um, performance improvement on bandwidth. Um, and then we have lots of room to go well beyond that with Gen 4 PCI coming into the mix, right? Because that's on, that is, I, yeah, that is probably more horizontal. But over the next two generations uh, of our processor roadmaps, Gen 4 is kind of in those timeframes. So we, we have a lot of room to grow on bandwidth. <laughs> um, but the other part of this, though, and the part that we're going to talk a lot about with, with Brian's talk next, um, is the latency, right? With hard drive latencies, like let's not even talk about it, right? We've, <laughs> we've never really cared about latency in terms of storage because latencies are, are so... You may not have. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't, or in general. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me couch that in from the end to end. An end user doesn't worry about the latency of storage because that is hidden from it. Right? Uh, the end so user worries about the latency of the application, which is determined by the latency of the storage. Right, but the storage is typically, we spend a lot of money in appliances that have a huge amount of DRAM-based cache to hide the performance of the drives behind it. And so we do a lot of work to hide the latencies of the drives, but the reality but is- we fail. Yeah, we do fail, that's fair. 
So this is like a 50-50 read-write mix workload, or what's the workload that's being depicted here? This, this is... 100% um, read, 4K this blocks? Is, um, this is a read workload, um, although with, with 3D Crosspoint itself, you actually get near parity. So the, some of the ways you think about access um, differences between reads and writes go away with the, the 3D Crosspoint. Writes are no longer as painful. Right. So today, today with current generation NAND as an example, this, well, this is definitely representative of what you would see with reads, but the writes have a, a lot more overhead because of amplification. <coughs> um, and so one of the things Amber did in putting these slides together is she tried to depict kind of what components of the latency, you know, what are the components of the latency? And so here you see kind of the software latencies, um, the drive latency and the controller latency. <laughs> and as we move forward, the controller latency really goes away. Um, and it really comes down to the device itself and the software. <clears throat> as, as, you, as you approach zero um, here, the network latencies and your software stack latencies elsewhere um, in the solution become much more obvious. And so that becomes a big part of the equation. And I think Brian and, and Nate will both talk in more detail about that. So you say <laughs> roughly the cross point will be like 10 microsecond latency? That yeah, I mean, we, we're not publishing hard numbers, but that's a rough approximation. I think that's a fair number to, to look to. In the NVMe form factor, so you still have PCIe and those overheads, so. Um, so the, it's not really an NVMe uh, reduction as much as it's a technology. W the NVMe was driven to allow you to realize a reduction. If you were doing this with SCSI, the protocol itself has quite a bit of overheads. You know, you don't see a protocol uh, overhead in the other two, you know, like HDD and SSD. Well, I th I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what this orange. Oh, the controller is. latency is the protocol overhead? Yeah. That's not what I would call it, but okay. Yeah, and, and again, this is a, like, I, I'm not the expert on this, so no, Amber would give you a lot more insight into the. Yep. <laughs> okay, a couple of points of clarification, which I think get at some of the questions you guys are asking. SSDs will ship first half of 16. Um, With Crosspoint NAND. Yeah, when she says SSDs, that's the NVMe. Sorry. Um, SSDs should achieve a latency of less than 10 microseconds. For 3D crosspoint media itself, the latency is less than one microsecond for reads. And one more. The 3D crosspoint that will be used is two layers high. Yeah, that clarifies, I think, the questions that were asked. Okay. Okay. Awesome. The layers question answered. Yep. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> We came to that conclusion. Yeah, we, 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 we agreed on that shortly after, but decided it wasn't worth disturbing people. Although Christopher thinks we should be feistier. <laughs> so it, just to take this back, though, to the latency conversation, you can see here these reductions in latency as we go forward. Um, and, and this is, again, why we, we ended the last talk with this notion of the pendulum swinging back to the network, because as, as we don't expect distributed storage to go away in the data center, but distributed storage um, means you have two components. You have the device on one side, and then you have the network on the other side. And so these two things have to be roughly um, in balance, or you can't realize the performance benefits, the, the latency improvements <laughs> one or the other. 
So just walking through this, you know, you can see this reduction continue on, but here we are approaching DRAM speeds. And so this represents a, a huge point in time of reflection of what this does to the overall end-to-end -end, um, solution in the data center. Right? This, is, it, this is introducing a major change in the overall composition of response time. And so that brings up the question of how you design your systems end-to-end -end going forward. All right, so that's 3D Crosspoint and NVM Express. <clears throat> what Brian is going to talk to you is really the, the need to address this latency. One of the things that isn't really addressed in, in the two in detail, but as you can imagine, and perhaps you've seen some of it, in addition to NVM Express as a device, we've been doing quite a bit of collaboration with people um, on NVM Express over fabrics. Okay, ready for me?